For the sake of our people and our economy, we cannot allow gridlock to prevail. Our goal as Republicans is to make sensible reductions in this spending and create a better environment for job growth, not to shut down the government. President Obama and new Republican Senator Rob Portman both hoping to avoid a government shutdown this week, but offering different solutions. And we're back now with the panel. So the continuing resolution funding the government runs out this Friday, and the best, it seems, that Congress can possibly come up with is a, a two-week extension, extension to avoid a government shutdown. House Republicans who want to cut spending by $61 billion over the next seven months said, fine, you want a two-week extension? Give us the prorated amount, which would be $4 billion. Uh, Senate Democrats said no way. Then House Republicans did something very smart. They identified $4 billion in cuts that Obama wants next year and said, we'll give you the cuts. We want the cuts this year. So, question, Mara, will there be a deal? Will they avoid a government shutdown at least for two weeks? Oh, yeah, I think they're going to avoid a government shutdown for two weeks. What uh, both sides moved, actually, in this new proposal, that the House proposal does not have any of those policy writers in it, and it doesn't prorate the $61 billion. What it does is it gets its $4 billion from things Obama w would have ended anyway, as you said, and also takes back some earmark money. Um, so, Senate Democrats, vulnerable Senate Democrats, get to say they voted for cuts. And House and Tea Party people get to say, see, we set the agenda and we're cutting the government as the two sides talk. Now, after two weeks or maybe at the most another three, maybe three weeks or four weeks, you can't do that anymore. You have to actually decide on what level of spending cuts you're going to agree on for the remainder of this year. And um, where, what's the number? I mean, I don't know what the number is, but I do think that if it's anything close to what John Boehner originally wanted, which is, was around $30 billion, it's going to be a victory for Republicans. Oh, I wouldn't. Well, I'll, 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 I'm just the moderator. Uh, do you think that uh, House Republicans would agree to $30 billion in cuts total? I mean, when they're now on record as asking for $61 billion there, in cuts? And, no and would, more importantly, should. I guess, would the Tea Party freshmen allow him to sign on to that? Uh, I th there's no reason they should. They have the leverage right now. And also, um, I think that what Senator Reid has found is he's got a formidable opponent in John Boehner who was creative and has kept the, has kept the new rep uh, freshman class together with him for now. And I think you might see some more creativity from there. And also, he is not somebody, he rules differently a little bit than Nancy Pelosi, who really had, she had a very raucous caucus, tried to pull all those people together all the time, and she ruled with an iron fist. And Boehner, as we've seen a couple, a couple of votes recently, it sort of opened up the floodgates and let people do, do their amendments. And so people feel like they have a little bit more stake in the process. And I think that um, Boehner is like the tortoise, if it's the tortoise and the hare, and that he'll come out on top at the end. Where do you think this is headed? Uh, is there going to be a shutdown? I'm not talking about this week, but two or three weeks down the road. Is there going to be a shutdown? And if there isn't, if they work out a deal, is it more on the House Republicans' terms, bigger, more cuts, or the Senate Democrat and President's terms, smaller, less cuts? Smaller, less cuts, because, you know, the, there's tremendous pressure in the country to reduce the size of the deficit, spending all that. But when it comes down to the brass tax, what are you actually cutting? Well, let's look at the $61 billion that you were talking about, Chris. You're talking about things like food safety, homeland security, border security. Uh, you're talking about things like education spending, schools. Uh, the American people are just not going to react well to that. They're just going to freak out. They're going to be like, what are you talking about? This is draconian. This is taking a hatchet to the budget. It's not doing something that's, either, that's even going to produce jobs or grow the economy. And that's, just, that's not Juan Williams talking. That's Goldman Sachs talking. So when you stop well, thinking wait, wait, about wait. the Goldman Sachs number, has Goldman been Sachs somewhat, has that's been somewhat that discredited. The no, no, they, it's all not. they did is no. All they did is they took the multiplier and they said, if you cut so much yes. and there's a number, that's going to mean it, so many fewer jobs. Thank you, Chris. It, yes, if that had worked, then the stimulus we'd have unemployment under eight percent. No, because we had we had continued losses and the the losses were accelerating. That's the Obama administration position. I mean, but anyway, look, I think look, so. so is this is this draconian? I mean, we're going to go back to spending of 2008, 2009. We all remember that things were just horrible in those days. I think Republicans can stand up to the Juan Williams Goldman Sachs nexus <laughs> and they should. And look, well, the big thing that happened this week is that the American public did not react as Juan did. They went home this week, the House Republicans, and they were nervous going home and the leadership was a little nervous. How are, what, what are the freshmen going to hear? They, the freshmen think they really, everyone wants to cut government. Were they going to go home and have the same experience the Democrats had exactly two years ago after they passed the stimulus and they went home and guess what? The public wasn't thrilled to be spending $800 billion. The Tea Party's got launched and the rest is history. And the big thing that happened this past week, in addition to John Boehner's, I think, clever maneuvering here, was that the Republicans went home 
and the dog didn't bark. Citizens are not outraged. Juan wishes that they were outraged. They That's didn't. Not, the, they had town still. meetings. They had town meetings. There was a conference call of the House so, Republicans. So, wait, wait, wait. Conference so, call. Because so, we're running out of time. Okay. Is there going to be a shutdown eventually or not? And if there isn't, and they have to make a deal, whose terms will it be under? There will not be a shutdown, I don't think. And I think the deal will be a good deal for Republicans, which will cut real spending in real time in a significant way. Let me, let me ask you, Mara, because the conventional wisdom is, I think, fair to say, whether it's right or wrong, is that back in 1995, when there was a government shutdown, it very much worked to the benefit of President Clinton and very much to the detriment of Newt Gingrich and the House Republicans, and that this time, again, that a shutdown would help Democrats. But there's some big differences. I, I, I went back and checked the deficit. In sure. 1995, was 164 sure. billion dollars. It's now sure. one and a half trillion. Sure, I mean people are in a mood to cut. To, they want the deficit resolved. Now, here's the, the dirty little secret: what they're talking about now has nothing to do with cutting the deficit. It's about cutting spending, that's for sure. But the deficit is being driven by things that none of these negotiations are about. It's not about domestic non-defense discretionary. The things that drive the deficit are entitlements and tax cuts and that's not on the table right now. I do think it's different than 95. I still think that both sides would be hurt by a government shutdown because it would look like Washington can't get its act together. What kind of jokers are they that they can't even keep the government operating? But I, but I agree, there's a huge kind of fever in the country to do something about uh, the debt and the deficit and spending. Uh, you don't have a leader like Newt Gingrich who's out there kind of boasting about how he's going to shut the government down. Um, and I just think it's very, very different. And you have the House Republican, all the House leadership in the Republican Party in both houses saying, we're not going to do it. Dana, uh, less than a, a minute left. And, and I want you to go back and address Juan's point, which is, and I think this is what how, uh, the Democrats are counting on. When we tell you specifically what they're going to cut, you're going to hate it. I, but I think that that won't work. You know, my first day on the job as a Hill press secretary was the first day of the first government shutdown. I remember well. Lots of changes since, um, since then, um, 16 years or whatever that it's been. Um, I think that the American people are not freaking out about it. I think that the Senate Democrats who are up for election in 2012 are really hoping this doesn't work. And meaning that their government doesn't get shut down and that they get a chance to vote on some spending cuts. Yeah, there are a lot of Democrats, vulnerable Democrats, who are going to vote for the Republicans on this issue. Thank you, panel. See you next week.